The first shock of my life. A dreamy, innocent girl with simple thoughts about life was deeply shocked by her first love. Let me summarize my first love story. I unilaterally loved him first. And we dated and talked for nearly two years. Then he confessed his love to me. We had a relationship for about a year. The romance was disrupted when he went back to the countryside to work while I worked in the city. During his time working in the countryside, he attended a feast, got drunk, and had an affair with a woman, resulting in a child with her. He never expected his enthusiastic socializing to be taken advantage of. He was devastated, and so was I. Both of us were heavily shocked by that incident. He and I reluctantly broke up in agony. You know, when you love someone, not just me but everyone, you give your all. Even if your lover has flaws or a slightly imperfect character, we easily accept and sometimes ignore criticisms about the one we love. He and I had similar family backgrounds. Except I was considered less attractive in the eyes of others compared to him. He was more capable and smarter than me. But because we had known each other for quite some time. He and I shared harmony in life and work. He brushed off the criticisms of others to be with me. I respected and admired him because he was a fellow countryman and a cheerful, affectionate person. Yet now I have to accept the bitter truth that he has become an unwilling father. I was deeply traumatized psychologically and physically. This first shock of my life has made me more withdrawn and closed off to this world. Though just in my twenties, no one would think of me as being that age if they met me. My face is haggard. With wrinkles around my eyes and a rugged beard, my eyes lifeless, my hair unkempt, and my limbs thin and bony. I cry all the time, I had to give up my job, a job I worked very hard to get. My mind is under extreme stress. I wander in the rented room, only knowing how to cry and cry. No one was by my side at that time. I hid it from my mother, and all I knew was to cry every day. My tears made my eyes swollen. Whenever I felt exhausted and hungry, I just made instant noodles and cried again. My life was so bitter, my friends. He wasn't with me anymore. And I felt like a lifeless body. He only knew how to cry and send me apology messages every day. Now, I had no other choice but to not respond to his messages and immerse myself in sadness. You must wonder why I'm so sad. But you know, when you love, you give your all, and when you can no longer be together, living is more painful than dying. During those times of sorrow and pain, people only know how to cry, and in some cases, they embark on a journey to become a monk or nun to forget about their past relationships. I was no exception. I promised myself to forget the first shock of my life and to never love again, then become a novice in a temple. I thought like that. But it was impossible because becoming a monk requires a lot of money, and now that I just graduated, I didn't have the means to earn money, and my family was too poor to support me. I was confused in my thoughts and beliefs. Perhaps because of him having a child with a girl he didn't love, it depleted my strength. I used to think my love story was like a fairy tale. After facing initial challenges, we would be together forever. I drowned in sorrow over that broken relationship. We didn't have the courage to run away together to a place where nobody knew us. 
If only he hadn't gotten that girl pregnant, we would have been together for the rest of our lives. He couldn't escape the responsibility of being the father of the child. Conscience and thoughts back then were different from nowadays. It was assumed that if you had a child with someone, you had to marry that person. It wasn't just a responsibility. It was also the duty and honor of the family lineage. Having a child with someone before marriage was considered improper and against tradition. Let alone going out together and having an unplanned child. There were so many curious glances, gossips, and judgments from neighbors and acquaintances. The stories woven through the mouths of people made him even more miserable. He also faced significant pressure from relatives and society. She was also criticized for having a child with him. As for me, nobody knew. Only I lived in sadness. Perhaps all three of us experienced the deepest sadness in life. But for the sake of life and the future, we had to continue. We didn't choose to abandon this life but tormented ourselves in conscience and thoughts about our families. Only those who stay behind suffer. I understand that clearly. But I also feel that I am too unlucky in this life. My parents gave birth to me in poverty. I am ugly and not intelligent, so when I received affection from him, it felt like a happiness to compensate for my limitations. I silently thank the heavens and the earth many times for allowing us to be together. But life isn't like a dream. We were only happy together for a while, and now we must part ways forever. The shock of my first love has drained my strength. I didn't want to live anymore, but for the sake of my family and myself, I forced myself to continue living. I no longer have the mental capacity to work or to get involved with anyone else. After some time following the shock, instead of tormenting myself, I found joy in my work. My goal was to make a lot of money and forget about him. Forget about the first love that I had tried so hard to obtain. In that relationship, the fault wasn't entirely his. I had a part in it too. I felt guilty and remorseful for allowing him and myself to love from a distance. And then, time gradually eased the pain within me. We have absolutely no contact anymore. I also moved to work in another province and have not contacted his sister either. Although I tried to forget him, I couldn't, my friends. Occasionally, I would visit his Facebook to see how his life was going. We weren't friends on Facebook before, so I created a new account to view his photos. That same smile, those energetic eyes. But it's all in the past. Perhaps he is stronger than I thought. I should forget about him, shouldn't I, my friends? I tried so hard, but it was only for a while. I should forgive and move forward on my path. I found a job at a joint venture company with a foreign country. Although my English wasn't in the right field, I tried my best and managed to save some money afterward. I found life happier. I traveled alone to explore the places where I lived in the scenic spots in various regions. I ventured into the virgin forest alone without fear. I thought back to the time when we admired wildflowers together. I told myself not to remember him, but I couldn't do it, my friends. I only remembered the memories with him and felt regret. By chance, I returned to my hometown to attend a friend's wedding and encountered him again. That day, I and my close friend were chatting happily with the crowd when suddenly, I saw his figure appear right in front of me, walking beside him was a girl. Oh, actually, it's his wife. The one who had a child with him and became the third party in our relationship. Our mutual friends didn't know about the relationship between me and him, so they didn't notice my expression. I was stunned. Why was he here? 
It wasn't until the next day at the actual wedding party that I found out she was related to my friend. I felt disheartened. Painful memories flooded back. My head was spinning, and I had to grip onto the chair. My head was pounding, I had been trying to forget him, forget the first shock of my life, and now he appeared. My spirit collapsed. I told myself to be strong. You can do this. He saw me but avoided my gaze, pretending not to notice me. He looked thinner, his once radiant eyes now clouded with worries. Perhaps he had suffered a lot. I saw him walking beside her, but he seemed unhappy, distant. Maybe he wasn't happy either. I sensed it keenly, but there was nothing I could do about it now. My heart was torn in agony. I met him again, but we couldn't even exchange a greeting. I'd rather not have met at all. In Western countries, when love fades, people can still become friends. Which seems nice. But where I'm from, if the love is gone or we break up for some reason, we almost always sever all ties, avoid each other. It's probably the easiest way to forget that love. But deep down, I think everyone holds on to something they can't forget if they shared affection before. I wanted to approach him, wanted to know how he was doing, but he avoided me. I knew he might be doing it to forget about me. My head was spinning, and I told my friend to take me home. When I got home, I collapsed into tears, memories of our happy times flooding back. Intertwined with images of him suffering when he had a child with someone else. Once again, I was overwhelmed by the first shock of my life. I'm fragile and weak. I didn't want to see him again. But the current situation made me collapse like before. I cried all night. Suddenly, his sister messaged me. She asked about me and shared that he had suffered a lot and always wanted me to be happy. I inquired about him, and she told me about him and their child. She said their child didn't resemble him at all. He had been very sad and hoped for my forgiveness for his mistakes. He hadn't married her because he didn't love her. She accepted being a single mother and kept their child a secret so that no one would know. He didn't deny his responsibility as a father and still provided financial support for her and their child. He said he wouldn't marry her. Although he is the eldest son in the family, he said he no longer has the right to face me. He kept reminding me that he always wanted me to be happy. His family urged him to get married. But he disagreed and often changed the subject. My friend continued to tell me that there was a teacher in the city who liked him and they even talked to each other and felt a connection. But he hesitated because his family said she was the eldest and she had five younger siblings, so it would be more difficult for him. He was afraid of hurting her, so after a while, he gave up. Hearing those words only added to my pain. My friend also said that he didn't want to love anyone anymore. But my friend knew that he still loved me a lot. He just didn't have the courage to be with me. I tortured myself for not replying to his messages. I thought he had married her and didn't want to interfere with his life anymore. The next day at noon, I attended my friend's wedding, and he avoided me so I wouldn't see him. He sat at the farthest table. Should I let go? It was my friend's happy day, but I felt so sad. Watching everyone enjoy themselves while I sat there feeling heavy-hearted. Maybe I should try to be happy. In such a situation, what should people do? Should I message and talk to him? I don't think I have the courage or bravery for that. Although he and I might reconcile, I'm afraid. I'm so afraid, afraid of losing him again. I'm exhausted, both mentally and physically. Maybe I should just let fate take its course. The ancients were right about a woman's fate, like a piece of driftwood in a river. Life flows along, not knowing where it will go or whether it will wash up on the shore. Swaying with the waves, letting life take us wherever it wants. Sometimes, we drift to the sandy shore, then the harsh sunlight. The severity of life squeezes us, draining us of water until we wither away. 
Other times, we drift into dense forests with no way out. After the meal, we got into the car to take my friend home to her husband's house, which they call taking the bride there. He and she sat in the front row, and I sat in the back. But we didn't communicate with each other. I bowed my head down to avoid others seeing the tears rolling down my face. Occasionally, I glanced over to where he was to see if he made any moves. But he remained motionless and silent. Meanwhile, everyone else was laughing and chatting happily, with funny stories making everyone laugh. However, I felt a heavy atmosphere looming over us. I wanted to greet him, but it seemed like he erected a wall to keep me away. I didn't dare to greet him. We used to be close, so loving, but now he's so distant. Oh, does he know that I can't forget him? Memories, both happy and sad, still linger in my mind. If only I hadn't met him in this situation, maybe I wouldn't miss him as much. Meeting each other but unable to speak to one another is so painful, you know. I thought we would never meet again. Yet, life ironically brought us together, only to avoid each other's gaze. Perhaps only time can ease the longing and sadness. If he's not happy, why doesn't he call me? Does he know that I still love him dearly and hope that we can be together again? But why doesn't he come back to me? Maybe he's afraid of hurting me again. I still long for him and hope he can speak up first. I should have greeted him, but he always avoids me. So I never had the chance. It's truly heartbreaking, everyone. After arriving at the groom's house, we sat drinking water, eating cakes, and enjoying music. I approached the table where he was sitting to greet him, but he suddenly took his phone and went outside to take a call. I didn't think someone had called him at that moment. I just wanted to say hello to him. I didn't expect anything between him and me. From that moment on, I knew that he and I would never be able to speak to each other again. I felt so sad and embarrassed about my action. Perhaps I should remain silent and bury our love in the past. The initial shock of our relationship left me emotionally and physically numb for a long time. Maybe he has his own reasons. And perhaps he's afraid to face the truth that he has a child with a woman he doesn't love. He feels guilty and he needs to avoid me to prevent me from getting hurt. Oh, the more he does that. The more painful and restless I feel. We don't belong together. Forever, memories of him will be an endless chain of sadness. No matter how long time passes, those memories only fade a little. Looking back now, I still feel sad, bitter about my love. I'm not happy anymore. I only know to look at my child to keep going. The first shock of my life has deeply ingrained in my mind, leaving a dent in my existence. It affects my future happiness. After attending the wedding, I returned to my work. I arrived at the company at 10 p.m., soaked by the pouring rain as I had no umbrella. Tears welled up as I thought about him, reminiscing about my shattered first love. If only I hadn't met him again. I would still be myself, focusing on my career and traveling to rejuvenate my life. I screamed loudly in the pouring rain, perhaps even the heavens pitied my love story. If he's not happy, then I can't be either. My anguish surpasses his by far. I'm mentally exhausted from this first shock of love once again. When I arrived home, shivering and trembling, I experienced convulsions. I had a fever over 40 degrees Celsius, delirious all night, and the next morning, my roommate had to buy medicine for me. I couldn't shake off the fever. My friend urged me to go to the hospital. But I simply told them to let me die. I was exhausted and passed out. When I regained consciousness, I was in the hospital. I was overwhelmed with sadness. My friend told me they hoped I would recover soon to continue this life journey. Life is beautiful. I must stay strong and keep moving forward. Thank you for your words of encouragement. I need to muster the strength to continue on this path.